Hello, my name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you a bit about jhipster. jhipster is well known as an application generator. It'll generate a Spring Boot backend with an Angular front end. There's also options for doing other things like a React front end or a Vue front end, but I'm just going to show you a lot of the defaults today. And so everything that we'll be doing is in this jhipster6 demo repository. You can see it here at mrabel jhipster6-demo. And there's a whole set of instructions here that we'll be going through. We'll install jhipster6, we'll create a project, we'll generate some entities, we'll add some business logic, make some UI enhancements, and then deploy it to the cloud. And so this is obviously very verbose and uh, goes through kind of everything. And I created a shorter version of it, which is basically just a set of steps. And so there will be times when I will spit out a bunch of code. I'm using IntelliJ Live templates for that. So if you see me just type a few characters and all of a sudden there's 10 lines, that's what I used for it. You can find those template definitions in my repo called Idea Live Templates. And you can go ahead and import them into your project if you'd like to use them. And I'm going to see the raw version and I'm using ASCII Doctor to transform this into a nice looking version. So you can do the same thing with that template. So we're going to start by creating a blog directory, create a jhipster app in it with these different options. So I'll put that on the left, put this on the right, and we'll start by just creating that blog directory. If you already have one, obviously delete it. And then you go into there. And this is one of the big mistakes people make with jhipster is that they expect it to create the directory for them. So this is one of the most essential first steps, especially when you're creating monolith. So you just type jhipster to get started. And then jhipster does support generating microservices. You can have a gateway in the front and then several microservice backends. But we're just going to do a monolith today. We'll call it blog. We'll use Java package name of org.jhipster.blog. We won't use the jhipster registry. So a lot of what I'm doing is just selecting the defaults. We'll use JWT or JOT authentication. We'll use a SQL database. You can see there's also no SQL options. And I'm going to choose PostgreSQL. And we'll do H2 for development. And that makes it very easy to develop and not worry about setting up a Docker container or installing anything locally. And as far as Spring Cache, I'm just going to use the default, which is EH Cache. And then for Hibernate second level cache, I'll say yes. And we'll use Maven. And then the other technologies you can use, you can integrate Elasticsearch, WebSockets, asynchronous messages with Kafka, or even the ability to do API first development. I'm just going to choose none of those, and we'll go with Angular. And there's also a number of boot swatch themes you can choose from. I'm just going to choose the default jhipster one. And then for internationalization, I'll say yes, and I'll choose English and Spanish. And then for unit testing, uh, I'm going to add end-to-end -end testing with Protractor. And I'll say no to install other generators from the jhipster marketplace. Then I'll go ahead and open the application in IntelliJ IDEA. And I'll start it. So you can see there's a number of files created for you. Almost 10,000 lines of code by default. And it's got a number of nice little things in here like an editor config that configures the editor to match the code. There's also things like prettier in here that are used to format the code when you commit it. And of course a package.json for Angular and a pom.xml for Spring Boot. As far as the source directory is concerned, most things are in the Java directory. There's the main application class that you're probably familiar with if you've used Spring Boot and then the domain classes, repositories. A lot of the configuration is right here. There's the Spring Security configuration. You can see if you're familiar with Spring Security, it's got everything configured, even a content security policy for you. So it's as secure as can be out of the box. And then also all the services and REST controllers. Services are here, REST controllers are here. For instance, account resource to get the user's information or to register them. Okay, so everything's up and running. We can go ahead and open that up in our browser. And if we sign in, you can use admin admin or user user. And then you can see some administration features such as user administration. There's also metrics. 
for the application to see the timings and statistics on everything. Health. Configuration, so you can see all the different spring properties that have been configured. Auditing. API, if you're using Swagger, you can see all the different endpoints that are available. And then H2 database, if you want to connect to that through your browser. And of course, you can log out. So one of the nice features that we have is the ability to run protractor tests. So if I run npm run E2E, it'll actually prove that everything works in a browser. So there you go, 11 tests pass out of the box. Now we can do some more interesting things. We'll go ahead and create a blog JDL from start.jhipster.tech. So I already have this. If we go here, I actually have it open in this tab. So you click on design entities. If I open this blog entity, here's the entities that I have. And so in the tutorial itself, you can also just copy and paste this out. I'm going to copy it straight from here. And you'll see the entity diagram here. We're going to have a blog that has a name and a handle. It's going to have a many to one relationship with user. It can have one to many entries. And then an entry can have many tags and a tag can have many entries. So all kinds of relationships here. So we'll go ahead and create a blog.jdl. Paste that in there. Then I'll exit out of this one and stop this one. And we're on jhipster import jdl block. And when prompted to overwrite the liquid base master file, I'll say A for all. Now we can run the application again. So if we were to log in and go to entities, there should be a blog entity now. I just got to refresh. So you can see there's a whole bunch of data in here already. That's from Faker.js, basically creates those data entries for you. So I don't actually like faker and fake data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. If you go to application-dev and source main resources config, search for faker, you just have to remove it, and then it won't be there anymore. And then the most important thing, since you're using H2 and it's a file-based database, you do have to run clean, or even easier, you can just r-r target and then h2db and then you don't kill all the compiled TypeScript and we'll restart now if we refresh our entries you can see there aren't any and if we go to our blogs there aren't any there as well so we can create a new blog and we can say this is the admins blog we'll give it a handle of admin and assign it to the admin user we'll also create a users blog And then let's create a few blog entries. So we'll say the obligatory first post. And we'll say that's today. And we'll put that in the admins blog. Put this one in the user's blog. And so now we have some entries, but you might see a problem that is it's not a great blog system because we can see each other's blogs, we can see each other's entries, right? So let's lock things down a bit so we can't actually see each other's stuff. Go back to IntelliJ. And the first thing is we'll make a modification in the blog resource. So right now it's got a get all blogs method right here. Instead of getting them all, 
let's find by user is current user. So this is generated for us. You can see there it is. It's in the blog repository. So now if we recompile this class, because we're using Spring Boot DevTools, all you have to do is recompile a class and it will reload it. So let's see if that change already happened. Oh, not yet. Oh, we're on entries. I always make that mistake. So go back to blog. I only see one entry. But the problem is if you go to entries, you still see everyone. So we need to fix that one. If we go to entry resource, and we go into the get all entries method, we can change this from doing find all to doing entry repository and find by blog user login order by date descending so that was an example of a live template where I spit out that whole line there and so that's just my JH find by you can see I type JH and then I hit find by it spits everything out for me so that's an example of a live template if I click on here then I can generate that method in the repository and Spring Data JPA if you have a method like this that's named similarly then it will create an implementation for it so that's all pretty slick we can recompile this one then we can go back to our resource recompile this one but now if we refresh We'll only see our current entries for the current user. So if we were to go to this 1051, all right, there's probably a 1050 maybe, or a 1052. All right, so it's blocking, but this is on the user's blog. I'm logged in as the admin, and I can see that here, and I can still see their stuff. So let's lock things down a bit more if we go into this get log method what we can do here is add a little more logic and that's to say if the blog is present first of all and it has a user make sure that user's username matches the current logged in user and then we have to change this response entity And now if we recompile, go to blog, go to admin's blog, try to view 1002, and boom, it blows up. So it does not give a great error message on the user screen, but in the console it does. So I would say that maybe this is something we should fix, but at the same time, someone's trying to hack the system, so you know maybe it's not a good idea to give them too much information. So back to our demo steps. You'll see we added the business logic. Uh, now I want to make some UI enhancements. So in our IDE, first of all, we can refresh this and look at one of our screens. For instance, the uh, let's look at an entry here. And you'll notice if you add some HTML, beautiful day. and save it, it actually doesn't render it. So let's change some things to render that. Wrong screen, entry dot component, HTML. Um, you'll see here, this is where that content is displayed. So I can just take that out and use enter HTML and set it right there. Now one of the features I'd like to use is webpack and browser sync so I can just run npm start and it will run that on a separate port port 9000 and any changes I make to my HTML or my TypeScript it'll reload those changes in the browser right away so I don't have to wait and restart the server again so now if we go to entry oh, we gotta log in first um, admin admin go to entries and you'll see now we have HTML working. Well, we can do even do better than that. Let's let's make it look like an actual blog. Let's take this whole table here, or this whole div. 
and replace it with some HTML that looks a little better. Now you can see it refreshes for me and now it looks like an actual blog. If we were to stretch it out a bit then you get text on the buttons but otherwise you can go in here and edit it and uh, you know take out the exclamation point and put a smiley face. And you'll see it all works just like normal. So let's shut everything down and deploy to Heroku. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're logged into Heroku. Type Heroku login. So press any key to open up a browser. Log into Heroku. Takes me back. I'm logged in. And now what you can do is you can run Heroku or uh, J Hipster Heroku. J Hipster Heroku. It'll prompt you for a name. I'll do J Hipster 6 demo in the US and we'll compile it on Heroku. And then this will go through the process of actually uploading it to Heroku, building it on Heroku, and deploying it. So there's going to be some conflicts because it's modifying my palm.xml, say A for all. So you can see that it took about eight minutes to run and now we can type Heroku open. And we can log in. Of course there won't be any data in here because we haven't entered any and Faker is off for the production profile. So there it is. I hope you've enjoyed this demo of jhipster. If you have any questions, there's a lot of documentation on our site. There's also setting up your environment, about microservices. And if you have any questions, make sure and go to Stack Overflow and use the jhipster tag to get help. If you find a bug and you believe that it's a bug, then enter it in the issue tracker. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy using jhipster and learning about Angular and Spring Boot.